Here is our 1971 Datsun 240Z that's being listed with Bring a Trailer. I want to create this video to provide those who won't be able to see the car in person prior to the auction an opportunity to get a walk around experience and allow for me to give the complete history of the Z all in one place. So basically from day one up until our final finishing touches on the build. So I apologize now this video may be fairly lengthy and I'll do my best not to bore you with too many details about the car. So with that being said, this Z is HLS 30 12070, production date of October 1970. It was purchased new from Earl Hughes Dotson, a dealer over in Fort Worth, Texas on December 21st, 1970. The Z has remained in the North Texas area its entire life and has been off the road since 1990 up until earlier this year when we, when we completed the build. I think being off the road for the last 31 years is probably the main reason why this car was so well preserved when we bought it. And it's pretty amazing how simple the history of this car is over the last uh, 51 years. So I came across the Z in Dallas, July of 2020. When I purchased it, it was a non-running car, 100% complete, minus the front bumper, and showed no signs of rust, which is pretty amazing for these cars. The floor has never been undercoated and rock solid. Battery tray, hatch area, dog legs, the rockers, inner fender wells, I mean, you name it. It was all pretty much rust-free. And I'll be completely honest, when I first came across this car, I wasn't really in the market for one, but just how nice and clean this car was when we came across it, I just couldn't pass the opportunity up to build it. So I'll also be completely transparent why the Z is being sold. So being that it was such a clean and original car at the beginning, I wanted to use this Z to challenge ourselves to build the most accurate and period correct 240Z that we could. This particular Z had the perfect foundation for that. You know, it's a Series 1, it's 901 silver, it's a pretty desirable color. 100% Texas car, and there's a super solid bones to build with. So with that in mind, that's what we did. You know, sparing no expense, we built the best original Z that we could. And I'll say, selling this car will allow us to build the next car. So if you dig through my previous brick and trailer listings, you'll see that white 78, or excuse me, 75 2AZ I sold. Um, I sold that, and that was help to fund the 72 510 that we built up. We enjoyed that car, and then later sold it on bring a trailer as well. That car was then used to fund this one. So um, for me, if I can find someone to, you know, take this car, give it a better home than I can give it, you know, love it more than I can love it and allow me to build the next one, that's a win-win in my book. So back on the car. So we got the car home and began dismantling it to begin the rebuild. And I've got photos of every step we took from day one and have documented everything on both Classic Z Car and on the Facebook page dedicated just for this car. I'll, I'll provide links below to both of those so you can go and, and check those out. So going to this build, you know, with the goal to eventually sell the car, I want any potential buyer to see as much detail as they could about the car, to know what's behind every panel, and also see how much detail we poured into this car. So I documented as much as the best I could. I mean, I even documented it down to the hardware count, 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 the plating, and which fasteners go where for each of these major assemblies on car. So once we got the shell completely torn down, we mounted up on a rotisserie and had a dust was blasted. Everything was stripped off the car, including the factory sound deadening in the interior. And I'll just say, for anyone who's restoring one of these Z's or looking to buy one that's been done, the sound deadening really should be removed during the restoration process. Nissan didn't do the best job back in the day applying rust preventive coatings or sealing up the body panels to prevent rust, as we all know very well with these. So if you chip away any section of the sound deadening on these cars, it's pretty much just raw steel underneath those, those mats. And in most cases, uh, for these cars, especially after being on the road for 51 years, give or take, it's going to be rust. So what we did for this car in which you can also purchase these mats, the Sound Daddy Master Nissan. But what we did for this car is you can buy bulk Sound Deadening material from 3M. It's just like the original, um, with the exception it does have a little bit of a texture to the top of it. There's like a almost like a diamond texture to it. So there is a little bit different than the original, but it's the same thickness. It's adhesive back and it's paintable. So. What we did is we replicated each of the panels exactly how Nissan had done it back in 1970 and then applied those to the car after it had been blasted, sealed, and uh, the body had been basically eradicated of any rust underneath those. 
So the shell itself was very clean. Um, once we had it blasted and top coated, no surprises, which was great. Um, you know, the two areas of concern of any corrosion we were able to find in the car were addressed, and that includes the battery tray and a small area underneath where the passenger heels would rest. So on the battery tray side, we drilled out the spot welds on the tray prior to blasting it, and this was done so we get good coverage of the area underneath the tray and remove the surface rust. So once that was done, the steel was, it was pitted, it hadn't had rotted through, and it wasn't necessarily soft, but it was pretty heavily pitted. I was concerned that if we tried to plug weld the, the original battery tray itself back onto the sheet metal, it would burn through the steel and be a very weak joint. So in order to eradicate this completely, we decided to go with the patch panel you can buy from Classic Fab JDM. They sell a lot of really good patch panels. They're very accurate to the original stampings of these cars. I mean, down to the floorboards, the frame rails, the dog legs, and this battery tray. So we purchased the, the Classic Fab JDM patch panel. It came with the entire area underneath the battery tray and a new tray itself. And so we grafted it into the steel shell uh, plug welded the the tray in it to replicate the spot welds and had everything sealed up so it's it's as rock solid as it can be in that battery tray on to the passenger heel panel area so this is what i'm referring to as the area right about where your heels would reside on the passenger side of the car so this car has been in, has had a dealer ac system installed into it it was installed back in the 70s when it was new the drain tube on the evaporator system had leaked and caused a soft spot in the floor. It wasn't a major rust area. I mean, it was a very small section. You can see I've got pictures of the actual patch panel we used to uh, cut this out and replicate the factory area of the floor. Um, it's a very small area, but I just want to note those two areas, that and the battery trailer, were the two areas we had to address for rust. Um, but still, all things considered, it's pretty amazing for this car and the fact that these things rust so easily. So with all the sheet metal work compare, uh, excuse me, with all the sheet metal repair work complete, we replicated the factory seam seal throughout the body. You know, that all got blo blasted away with the dustless blasting. All the body panels were bolted back in the car so we could get, we could dial in the body lines and the panel gaps, you know, do any necessary body work to really perfect the lines of this car the best we could. The shell was painted in stages, which you can see in the build threads. So we first painted the other side of the Z, the engine bay, and the interior, all while it was up on a rotisserie. After that, we built it up to a rolling shell, and then we completed the painting of the exterior of the car. So details on the underside of the Z. So when we dis disassembled this car, every mount, suspension component, bracket, or panel that was originally black on the car from the factory was blasted and powder coated and every bolt bracket washer nut anything that was originally plated uh, what would be today clear yellow zinc was also stripped polished and then replated back to what it was factory and that also goes for the original hard lines we had all those uh, cleaned out plated and um, you know restored back to the factory condition so the assembly process made the car rolling shell involved mounting all the original hard lines with new rubber isolators, replated brackets, all new replayed hardware. You know, the struts were completely rebuilt, new bearings, seals, rubber bits, KYB struts, rebuilt or new brake components were applicable, and all that was mocked up on the car so it could be a true roller. So, and every suspension component that it took to facilitate that, all the bushings are new, hardware is new, replated, I mean everything. The differential was torn down, inspected, and rebuilt. Uh, fuel tank bowled out and recoded. Uh, the straps were powder coated for the fuel tank. It's got new rubber webbing on them. Um, all the hardware to mount the fuel tank was also replated. I mean, just everything. You know, being that the car had been off the road for the last 31 years, I we wanted to go through every system of the car and ensure that there wasn't something hiding that had basically parked the car back then. So. We try to be as thorough as we could, document everything we could. Um, that way the buyer, potential buyers have a lot of confidence in this car and the work has been done behind it. So we're at a rolling shell at this point in the build. 
the engine transmission side of the build. So we pulled the whole assembly out and inspected it for any major issues. The engine spun freely. It didn't show any signs of a previous incident. It was almost completely untouched from when it was new. It was pretty remarkable. I mean, you look at the hose clamps, most of the hoses, even the spark plug wires. I mean, everything was just basically as it was back in 1971. So the long block was sent off for rebuild. I mean, it's a pretty standard rebuild since the cylinders weren't scored. You know, there was no paying or anything. It was a pretty uh, light rebuild, all things considered. I'd have to look into the invoices to give the exact details, um, but I'll provide all these receipts to everything we've done and everything that was done to the car um, to the next buyer or next owner, excuse me. Uh, for the cylinder head, it was stripped down, decked, you know, valve job, you know, the basic uh, needs for a, a light cylinder head rebuild, anything it needed, we did, you know, studs, valves, whatever it took. And so we got the long block back and began the rebuild process. You'll see in the car, the oil pan, we had that blast and powder coated, that got installed. The original exhaust manifold was blasted and top coated as well. And this car does have a complete Z therapy carburetor set up on it, you know. That new gasket seals. We went and tried to replicate all of the correct hose clamps where applicable that weren't either on the car or had been restored, you know, during the process. It's got all the correct braided hoses, heater hoses, radiator hoses, intake hoses, you know, you name it. So I, I mentioned the AC system prior. So this car did have an AC system installed on it from the dealer. I know that's not 100% original. You know, we were going for as original as possible we could with this car, but down here in Texas, it basically, the summers here, you know, it's it's almost impossible to drive a car like this without some sort of form of AC. So I wanted to retain that just to make the car more usable, you know, especially if the car, you know, moves on to another climate that's just as equally hot and humid as Texas. So it was a AC system installed on the dealer. Um, I will say I, I don't like the way these AC systems were installed back then. Um, if you look at just about any other AC system installed on a 240Z, um, especially ones that were done by the dealer, uh, they're going to be have a big bulky compressor, typically on the right-hand side of the engine. AC hoses just ran everywhere, wherever it was convenient. Uh, the dryer is going to be sheet metal screwed to the, in front of the Vintag and the strut tower. Uh, really little effort to keep the system as tight as possible. You know, they were just going for making it easy to retrofit these cars with AC. So we went the complete opposite route with uh, this car. The AC compressor is updated to a, a R134 uh, applicable compressor. And we mounted that on the lower left-hand side of the block. You know, I guess that'd be comparable to like a 280Z or 280ZX. Custom brackets were made to mount the condenser off the existing radiator attachment points on the core support, so we didn't have to drill any holes for that. The dryer was also mounted to these same custom brackets on the core support off the, uh, just adjacent to the condenser. So basically, what I want to do is make everything uh, removable and not necessarily permanent to the car if someone desired to remove the AC system. So, and we also went with the goal of making it as hidden from plain sight as possible. Uh, you know, try to put everything on the front, the core support, you know, where you really can't see it unless you're actually looking for it and get everything out from any, inside the engine bay. And if you look underneath the car, um, we also fabricated a splash shield. Um, this was made to retain AC lines coming from the compressor. It basically helps route them down and below the radiator and keeps them away from the fan, keeps them really nice and tidy and out of your way. Uh, this again, this mount uses the existing holes in the fact where the factory splash shield would have been. So again, it's it's not a permanent installation. We didn't have to cut the car up to do it. So I'm really happy why this AC system turned out. Um, we did use the evaporator that had came with this car from the dealer system that was disassembled. Um, the core sent off had it had it clean, vacuumed out, and pressurized, and basic quality checked. So we did retain that. Uh, I, the reason being is it, it integrates very well with the factory blower motor underneath the dash. So it's a very Z tailored design. So I did like the way it looks. It's it's very um, hidden and tucked away nicely. And we did retain the um, factory control housing from the AC system installed from the dealer. 
we just took all the guts out and put in a new switch and a new thermostat switch uh, just to make sure everything was going to be in tip top shape. So it's kind of nice when you do open up the hood, you don't see a big bulky compressor or really even AC lines. You have to kind of dig a little bit deeper and, and, and really look down on in the bottom of the car to realize it actually has AC. So really happy the way that turned out. So apart from the AC system, the only other major component that's not period correct on the, on, at least on the engine side, is the distributor. Uh, this car does have a coil and, and distributor off of a 280ZX. It's an electronic one. I, I think it's one of the best upgrades you can do to one of these cars, especially in stock form. You know, with the, the electronic ZX distributor, these cars, they're easier to start, they idle better. Um, the rev is much cleaner through the power band. Um, it just, it's just all around just a benefit. So, you know, if anybody is looking at a 240 or has a 240, you know, and you're sitting there fighting the points or even the Petronic system, I, I had that in a, another 240 and it was problematic at best. The ZX distributor swap is as an easy thing to do. It, the, your tack will still work just fine. It's super easy and it's, it's not a, it's also not permanent if you decide to pull it off down the road. So getting an interior of the car, I'll, I'll start with the dash and we'll work our way back to the back of the car. So this is a brand new dash in the car. It's not a cap, it's not a refurbished crack dash. This is from uh, uh, Hung Vu, if you look him up on Facebook at Vintage Dashes, he sells these brand new dash pads you can put in these cars. It's an excellent piece. I would highly recommend it to anybody. You know, much better than putting a, a cap on there. Um, you know, I, I've tried several of the kits, all kinds of different kits that you can buy to restore a crack dash, and none of them have, have lasted more than a month at best, um, especially down here, down here in Texas. You know, the, the expansion rates of that old foam, the fillers that you use, the top coats, the body fillers, whatever you use, they, they all expand at different rates, and it's going to crack. And these cars also, especially stock cars, um, they're not the most structurally sound, so you're going to get a little bit of body flex on that dash, and it, it will eventually crack, unless you go with a brand new dash like we did. So I'll put a link at the bottom for that dash um, to the Facebook page of those guys. You know, hit them up. It's a great product. Highly recommend. So all the gauges of the car, they're all dis disassembled. You know, we cleaned them. You know, some of the gauges had some fading from sun, you know, just from being, you know, 51 years old. So we had all the bezels redone. You know, put all that back in the dash. The entire wiring harness on the on the car and also on the dash was completely disassembled. You know, we checked every connector, make sure everything worked as it should. All new connections were were installed in the dash. It was rewrapped just like the factory did. I've got pictures of all this, you know, because that's going to be something you won't necessarily be able to see just jumping in the car. So I'll have all these pictures in both the build threads I mentioned earlier. You can view it and see a real good behind the scenes of what it took to get this dash the way it is. So the center heater panel, that's a new piece. Um, and that's a new one because the original had been trimmed to fit an aftermarket radio prior to me buying a car. So uh, I didn't wanna reuse that piece or try to fix it that, you know, they are very flimsy and, and brittle. So the, the control mechanism for the heater, defrost, all that good stuff, that was all stripped apart. We, you know, we replated every single component that was originally plated you know, power coated all the other pieces and put all that back together. The heater com controls in the heater court itself behind it, all that was stripped apart, you know, blasted, painted, new foam seals, gaskets, the heater court itself was sent off, rebuilt. And you can see we've got a perfectly good looking factory radio. It works just fine. It looks, sounds good for, you know, an AM radio. The antenna works, you know, everything works up in that and in the radio and all that system so this is the original console to the car um, i will say we did, did a light refurbishment on this one um, just to kind of get back the color and some of the texture had worn off the the shift boot it's a new shift boot the ashtray is original the car it just had a really light you know cleanup on that one didn't take a whole lot to do that it's got a new let's see a new choke knob and all that mechanism had been stripped apart and replayed it as well. So if you look at the headliner in this car, we'll kind of look at the, the overhead area. The headliner is the original one of the car. 
We were very careful when we removed it during the teardown process because at that time it was a, we looked at it and, and realized just how nice it was. And I wanted to keep it just in case we were going to reuse it down the road. I'd actually bought a new headliner for the car. I believe it's one from Motor, Motorsport Auto. It's probably the same one all the Z shops sell. Uh, but that one, it was almost double the thickness, the, the, the grain, the texture. It didn't match, and I, I just didn't, I didn't like the way it looked. So we ended up not using it, installing the original back in the car, and I think that was a good good decision because it, it looks very nice in there. The sun visors, I had those sent off to a local upholstery shop to have those redone. They did a fantastic job on these. So originally, for anyone who doesn't know, these, these sun visors, these cars, they were a wire frame sun visor with foam in the middle to give it shape. And those turn, typically turn to dust, they look baggy. I mean, that's just due to the age of the foam deteriorating. So what was done is they took the frames and used that as a template to make new visors out of a hardboard that you typically use to create custom interior panels. So they substituted the foam with that and, and rewrapped these, these sun visors. And the result is, is just, I think they look so nice. They're real stiff, they're real nice and sturdy. Um, real good material, matches the factory other materials in the car. Uh, they did a really good job over at Extreme Upholstery here in Denton, Texas. So if anybody's looking at having theirs redone or anything interior related, um, Andy at Extreme Upholstery he does great work. I'll, um, I'll put a link to, I'll see if I can find his website and put a link down below in case you guys want to follow up with any work for him. So all the diamond vinyl in the car and the jute material is new. We were able to get the old jute pieces out and use them as templates. Um, just because they were pretty well intact when we pulled them out of the car originally. So we used those to replicate each section exactly how it came from the factory uh, with new jute material. And I'll say I, I took the diamond vinyl. This diamond vinyl came from JDM Car Parts. It's the same vinyl you kit you can buy from just about anyone. Um, it, it's oversized quite a bit. So we used the factory vinyl as templates and trimmed it to fit just like the factory did. The carpet on the car is also brand new. It's a brand new kit. It fits very well, I think, for the all things considered. I'm, I'm happy with it. It's a very good replica of the original style of the way the carpet was in these cars. Uh, you know, very original looking. So looking at the seats, these things have been completely rebuilt. And I don't mean just a quick reskin of the covers. I mean, we had the seat frames themselves were blasted and powder coated. All the hardware was stripped and replated. New webbing for the seat bottoms. We replicated the rivet style method used to attach the, the webbing to the reinforcements. It's got new foam, new seat covers, everything. So it's pretty cool. If you look at the seats from like the hatch area, you can actually see the, the yellow zinc replated uh, sliders that these seats sit on. And I'll also say the seats do have plastic spacers to rise them off the floor. So I'm, I'm a little over 6'3", and with those spacers in there, it, I don't have a whole lot of headroom. I do have some, but not a lot. So taking them out, I fit much comfortable in the car. So I left those out of both the seats. If, if the next guy who, who has his car wants, you know, you could easily stick them back in there and, and raise the seat up a little bit, get a little more comfortable riding position. So those will go along with the car. I'll, I'll throw those in the car. That should sum up. Most of the major interior details, uh, you know, it does have the original seat belts. Those have been restored. We got an OEM dome light, new door panels, new hardware, new armrests, gasket seals, everything. Uh, we did a blow. We did update the blower motor, the heater blower motor. It's got a Kia unit, uh, a Kia Sportage, I believe, uh, blower motor in there. So that's a huge improvement to the efficiency of the blower motor. So looking at the exterior of this Z, so bodywork wise, you know, as I said before, it was very clean from the beginning. You know, it hadn't been launched to a lake, had been wrecked or cut up for flares or spoilers or anything. Um, the hood that was on the car when we first bought it, there was a dent in the nose when we bought it. Um, and rather than trying to mess with that, I already had a really clean 240Z hood um, in my inventory. So we went ahead and just swapped that hood for this one and had that one blasted and did all the all the necessary panel fitting with that. All the emblems on the car, they're all new OEM pieces. You know, every single piece of rubber on the exterior, interior, everyone on the car is brand new. 
the side marker lights, these are restored OEM units. Um, there's another Z guy in the area. His name's Jim Arnett. He does, he's a local Z guy. He does a lot of really good work restoring these Z components, uh, the license plate lights, side marker lights, you know, fuel pumps, things of that nature. So, um, try to find, if you can find Jim Arnett on Facebook, and I'll try to put a link to his, his Facebook page. He's got a lot of good parts too. If you're looking for some really good period correct things for your Z. Turn, turn signal assemblies, uh, those are all OEM. The right hand unit is the original in the car. The left hand lens itself had a crack in it when we got the car. So I did swap that out for a new old stock one I had in our inventory. Those were those both were disassembled. We polished the lenses and rebuilt everything with new gaskets. Um, looking at the side of the car, the door mirror is a brand new OEM one. All the gaskets, all the seals on the doors, all the body seals. I, I probably already mentioned this. Those are all brand new too. And look at the back. The tail lights are the original units with new chrome trim pieces. And again, just like the front turn signals, these were torn down, polished the polished the lenses, redid the housings, cleaned them up really good, new gaskets and new bulbs, and rebuilt the harness. For these bumpers. They are new and they're actually stainless bumpers, which is really nice. So you can buff them out with like a car polish or anything else to bring them back to their luster, um, which is great. I can't recall the company I bought them from. I will dig up their information. Um, I'll have to look back at our invoices and I will put their information in the, the description below this video. Um, really good piece, uh, front and rear bumpers, really good pieces. They fit really nice to the car. Um, I think it's just a, a really good alternative to, you know, use set of bumpers that are, you know, painted or trying to get your own bumpers replated. Look at the rims. These are the original steel wheels of the car. They are date stamped for October 1970. Um, and I've got a picture to show that for each rim, including the spare. These are the hubcaps that are original to the car as well, which is pretty amazing. You know, we did a light restoration on these, you know, when we were doing the repainting the graphite for the taillights and the grill, we did paint match the, the hubcaps so they wouldn't match that. So it's just a real light restoration on those. They really didn't take much to clean up really nicely. If you look at them real up close, a few of them do have a couple scratches in them, you know, maybe a couple little, hair, you know, dents and things like that. That's just because they've been on the car since they were new. So they're going to have a little bit of wear and tear, but overall, I think they're an excellent uh, set for this car. So that should wrap up a lot of the details about this C. I apologize this video, you know, we're looking at about a half an hour long video for this, but uh, like I said at the beginning, I want this to be kind of a one place you could go to to get all the information off this car as you could, especially for anyone who's a potential buyer. You know, we'll have this thing listed on Bring a Trailer. Uh, for anyone who's who's looking to build this car, I wish you the best luck. You know, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you more about it. You know, if, if you'd like to see the car in person. Um, and with that, thank you for watching.